Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Matters of Faith, the radio show. Matters of Faith is a show designed to bring issues of interest to you, the listening audience, that will challenge, encourage, motivate, and inspire you to keep the faith. I am your host, the Reverend Dr. J. Lauren Russell, and it's my job to engage you in stimulating dialogue, dialogue that's inspiring, encouraging, motivating, dialogue and conversations that will help you build your determination, your commitment, and your character, conversations that will help you keep the faith. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. 1 John 5 and 4. And now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, without further ado, it is time for Matters of Faith, the radio show. Good evening, everybody. Today is Monday, April 17th. It's 8 o'clock and it's time for Matters of Faith, the radio show. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the topic and the article, Squeezed. And my very special guest tonight, Reverend Dr. Daniel Dupree. Let me tell you, tell a phone, tell a friend, make sure you don't miss this show tonight. My very special guest is Reverend Dr. Daniel Dupree, and we are broadcasting live on Matters of Faith as well as the J. Lauren Russell Facebook groups. Remember, squeezed. And my guest, Reverend Dr. Daniel Dupree. Tell a phone and tell a friend. Don't forget to support our advertisers and our sponsors, the JLR Company and J. Lauren Russell Consulting, LLC, for all of your church financial consulting needs. Check out our website, www.jlorenrussellconsulting.com. That's www.jlorenrussellconsulting.com. Or simply give us a call, 718-328-8096, 718-328-8096. If you want to train your trustees, if you want to develop your property, if you need a church loan, give us a call. We'll be there to help. Matters of Faith, the book, can be purchased at my cash app, dollar sign Matters of Faith. The cost of the book is $22.80. That's $22.80. You can send your check of money order to the JLR Company, Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. That's Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. Get the book. It will absolutely bless your life. You can also get it as an ebook. All you need to do is go to www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. That's www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. The book has no shipping and handling if you get it as an ebook and also check out the eat okra app for all black owned restaurants all over the nation that's right eat okra and finally subscribe like and share our matters of faith youtube channel make sure that you subscribe like and share our matters of faith youtube channel matters of faith family i want to make sure that i emphasize this COVID is not over Please, ma'am, please, sir, make sure that you're vaccinated. We are mingling again. We're getting together in large crowds. Don't expose yourself unnecessarily. Be sure that you are vaccinated. And if you don't do it for yourself, do it for someone that you love. They may get it, and it may miss you. Anyone age five and above are still eligible. Please, ma'am, please, sir, get vaccinated. And now the article, Squeeze. That article can be found in my column, Matters of Faith, at www.thebronxchronicle.com. That's www.thebronxchronicle.com. Just scroll down till you find my article, Squeeze. And it also can be found in the Yonkers Insider newspaper, online newspaper, www.yonkersinsider.blogspot.com. That's yonkersinsider.blogspot.com. Remember, squeezed Luke chapter 6 verses 43 through 45 from the New King James Version for a good tree does not bear bad fruit nor does a bad tree bear good fruit for every tree is known by its own root. for men do not gather figs from thorns nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks 
squeeze. What do you get when you squeeze a lemon? Now that's a facetious question that really doesn't require an answer. Everyone knows that lemon juice comes out of a lemon when you squeeze it. You can't get grape, orange, apple, or any other type of juice out of lemon because lemon is what's in it. Luke says in the text that a good tree does not bear bad fruit. In the same way, a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. He explains that trees are known by species and the types of fruit they bear. Even if fruit were not recognizable by their appearance, you would know exactly what type of fruit you have when they are squeezed. It will never be possible to get orange, apple, grape, or any other type of juice from a lemon. Luke broadens his comparison and looks at the human heart. He says clearly and emphatically that a good heart produces good things and an evil heart produces evil things. Like fruit, Luke says the human heart produces fruit according to what's in it. But unlike a fruit which is recognizable by its shape, color, and overall appearance, the human heart may be camouflaged, altering its true appearance and hiding its true content. What makes humanity so interesting is that the content of the heart is made evident by a person's reaction and the words that come out of their mouths when someone says or does something that they don't like. To paraphrase Adrian Rogers from his book, What Every Christian Ought to Know Day by Day, if you squeeze somebody and anger spills out, they are full of anger. But if you squeeze someone and Jesus spills out, they are full of Jesus. Anger is another way to describe sin. Jesus speaks for himself. It's easy to determine whether your heart is full of anger or Jesus. Just watch how you respond and listen to the things that come out of your mouth when you are squeezed by the challenges of life. In our often chaotic, turbulent, and troubled world, let me suggest that we do a self-check to see what comes out of us when we are squeezed. Be blessed. Here's my question, as if you didn't know. What comes out of you when you're squeezed? Can I ask it again? What comes out of you when you're squeezed? So this gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce my guest for this evening. Uh, this man is no stranger to me. He is someone that I've come to know, love, and, and respect quite a bit. So if you will, welcome with me tonight, Reverend Dr. Daniel Dupree served as pastor of the Greater Universal Baptist Church of the Bronx from July 1996 to his retirement in 2021. As pastor, he was responsible for worship leadership, pastoral care, community building, administration, ministry building, preaching, and teaching. He automated the administrative system, renovated the facilities, created media displays inside the sanctuary, created a dynamic website, and has built strong relationships with community groups and church leaders across the nominations. Although retired, Dr. Dupree is still well respected in New York City as one who has done dynamic work in the South Bronx, but has reached well beyond those borders. Prior to coming to the Great Universal Baptist Church, he served with impressive distinction at the renowned and well-known Covenant Avenue Baptist Church in Harlem, New York from 1983 to 1996. He was Minister of Education, Minister of Evangelism, Minister of Children and Youth Services, and Minister of Pastoral Care. At the Greater Universal Baptist Church, Dr. Dan created several vital programs and organizations, including the Greater Universal Community Development Corporation that he established in 1998 and continues to serve as its president. This organization is committed to developing strong social and housing programs in the South Bronx and committed to improving the health of the people in the South Bronx. He was also a cable access TV executive producer, providing quality programming in the Bronx and Manhattan, New York, through the church's weekly cable show known as Reaching Lives and Building the Body of Christ. He served on the board of the South Bronx Overall Economic Development Corporation, SOBRO, a citywide community building institution involved in construction and social development with which it's based in the Bronx. He was also a part of a dynamic collaborative of South Bronx organizations 
which was created by the Federation of Protestant Welfare Agencies to fight the spread of HIV and AIDS. He served as the president of his own church growth consulting administrative organization called Heavenly Works Incorporated. He helped shape the lives of many men and women as an adjunct professor in the City University of New York Postos Community College campus for more than 25 years. He is a mentor to many persons serving in ministry and has a firm commitment to the ministry of developing leaders and a dedication to discipleship and outreach evangelism. Dr. Dupree also served with distinction in the United States Army National Guard in the state of New Jersey from 1971 to 1997, retiring as a captain at the, excuse me, retiring as a chaplain at the rank of major. Dr. Dupree is married to the former Loretta Griffin, who is an international leader in her own right. They are the proud parents of three very productive adult children. Danielle, who is deceased, Reginald and Nicole, and grandparents to two, Isaiah Daniel Dupree and Noah John Dupree. The Dupree's current residence is Smyrna, Delaware. Dr. Dupree is faithful, a faithful servant, who realizes that he must work the works of him who sent him while it is still day, because when night comes, he understands that no one will be able to work. He is determined to bless the Lord at all times, and he is convinced that God is not finished with him yet. Matters of Faith family, would you welcome with me this evening my friend, my colleague, my brother, my pastor, Reverend Dr. Daniel Dupree. Now, I've done all of that, and I did it to the best of my ability. Dr. Dan is running a little bit late, and so what I'm going to do is stop my share, and when he comes in, we'll bring him right in. But I want to welcome you all tonight to Matters of Faith Radio Show. I'm so glad that you tuned in. I hope that you had an opportunity to read the article. And if you did not, I hope and pray that you did take the time to listen to it as it was read in your hearing this evening. If you got on a little bit late, uh, I, I, I wish that you would read it. In fact, maybe I'll go back and read it again since I'm waiting for Dr. Dan. Why don't I just go back and read it again? so that you will know exactly what it is that we're looking at and what the uh, parameters are in this regard. So here we go. Luke chapter 6, verses 43 through 45 from the New King James Version. And the scripture reads as follows. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a brumble bush or bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. What do you get when you squeeze a lemon? That's a facetious question that really doesn't require an answer. Everyone knows that lemon juice comes out of the lemon when you squeeze it. You can't get grape, orange, apple, or any other type of juice out of a lemon because lemon is what's in it. Luke says in the text that a good tree does not bear bad fruit. In the same way, a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. He explained that trees are known by species and the type of fruit they bear. Even if fruit were not recognizable by their appearance, you would know exactly what type of fruit you have when you squeezed it. It will never be possible to get orange, apple, grape, or any other type of juice from a lemon. Like Luke then broadens his comparison and looks at the human heart. He says clearly and emphatically that a good heart produces good things and an evil heart produces evil things. Like fruit, Luke says the human heart produces fruit according to what's in it. But unlike a fruit, which is recognizable by its shape, color, and overall appearance, the human heart may be camouflaged, altering its true appearance and hiding its true content. What makes humanity so interesting is that the content of the heart is made evident by a person's reaction and the words that come out of their mouths when someone says or does something they don't like. To paraphrase Adrian Rogers from his book, What Every Christian Ought to Know Day by Day, if you squeeze somebody, 
and anger spills out, they are full of anger. But if you squeeze someone and Jesus spills out, they are full of Jesus. Anger is another way to describe sin. Jesus, of course, speaks for himself. It is easy to determine whether your heart is full of anger or Jesus. Just watch how you respond and listen to the things that come out of your mouth when you are squeezed by the challenges of life. In our often chaotic, turbulent, and troubled world, let me suggest that we do a self-check to see what comes out of us when we are squeezed. Okay, now you got it. Now, you know my question, right? The question that I'm asking tonight is quite simply, what comes out of you when you are squeezed? I'm gonna put that in the chat box. What comes out of you when you are squeezed? So that's the question. Now, I'm going to look for your answers as we as we uh, anticipate the arrival of Dr. Dupree. I want to challenge you. Let's talk about this for a minute. Let me see what you've got going on. All right. Um, what comes out of you when you're squeezed? I'm going to give you a moment to answer that. Put something in the chat. Let me look at it. I want to talk about that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to share something that happened to me today. I'm going to share something that happened to me just before the show. Talk about being squeezed. Talk about being squeezed. Hold on for a second, guys. Y'all continue to talk. Du Dr. Dupree is actually calling me. I can't believe he's calling me, but let me see what he's got going on. I'm going to put you on mute for just a minute. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. So. Um, tell me, what comes out of you when you're squeezed? What comes out of you when you're squeezed? When things happen in your life that create havoc for you? Life, work, people, um, organizations, institutions, your church. What happens when you're squeezed? What, 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 what comes out of you? I need you to talk to me. I'm going to, while you're talking, I'm going to send the link again to Dr. Dupree so that he can get in and join me tonight. But please talk to me, guys. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on. What happens to you when you are squeezed? Okay, good. Just got that out. Good. Here we go. Good job. Good. Curse words till I get a grip of myself. Then I apologize for using bad words. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. That's honest. I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, that's what happens. And, and of course, I'm talking about regulating ourselves, looking at what we do and examining ourselves honestly. And then once we examine ourselves and see who we are, what do we need to do to make the change in ourselves? Or can we make the change in ourselves? And I argue and say, nah, we're not gonna be able to do that. We need some assistance. We need some assistance. I like what Paul said. Paul said, when I wanna do good, evil is always present. That which I want to do, I, I don't do. And that what I don't wanna do, that's what I wind up doing. And I don't know about you, but I, saw, I fall into that category myself. Um, are you calling me again? I just texted to you. No, you interrupted my show here. <laughs> Dr. Dupree is funny, y'all. That's my buddy. I love him. But he's funny. <laughs> So he'll come in. I'll ask him a question. We're gonna we're gonna jump on it. But 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 I like your answers and and and, uh, and I like that. So Dorothy says, um, "I was watching." And good evening to all. Thank you for watching, Sister Eaton Jones. I appreciate you. Uh, and and um, uh, Regina says, "I'm currently being squeezed by my health challenges. More moments of tears, even though I know God has not abandoned me." Awesome. 
That's awesome. I know he hasn't. I know he hasn't abandoned me. The, um, and Regina was my guest the other night. If you didn't catch that, make sure that you go back and see that. It was profound. It was profound. So thank you for being on tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being on tonight. Um, I have, let me share this with you. This is interesting. I ordered a new computer. Ordered an Apple. Custom design Apple. I would. I, I need this. For all the things that I do, I need to be very organized. So I ordered this thing. And um, it was supposed to come. I'm waiting for it. Anticipating it. And here's my guest. Um, I'm anticipating the painting coming and I get a notification that it's coming. It's here. So I called my wife. I said, did you get it? She said, nothing came. That was the 30th of April. I've been trying to find it. I've been trying to file a claim for it. I mean, just a whole lot of things, a whole lot of things. Um, I just let him in. What happened? Um, what happened with me is that for the last two weeks, I've been trying to locate this thing. I made a police report and it was be being delivered by UPS. They never delivered it. They said they did, but they didn't. So I reached out to them, reached out to Apple, went to the store. I didn't buy it through the store. I bought it online, but I figured if I'm talking to the people at the store, I'm talking to the people at Apple. Not so. Not so. If you order it online, you got to call people online. So finally got in touch with them today, reached out. They said, we understand, Mr. Russell, no problem. We'll fix it. And uh, I said, great. This is going to work. I get an email saying that that's not going to happen. They did the investigation and um, they closed the case. I don't have my product. They have my money. So I spoke to a young lady tonight who just happens to be a believing Christian. And of course, I was angry initially. And we went back and forth. But in my anger, and she said this to me after a while, she says, one thing I noted about you, that even though you were angry, you never cursed at me. You never demeaned me. And it caused me to take another look at it and go in a different direction. So she asked for a further investigation, a deeper dive, if you will, and promised me that she would call me back on Wednesday. And I thought that was so great. I began to talk to her about some of the things that I do. And I said, it's interesting because tonight I'm being squeezed. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be talking about tonight, being squeezed. And um, I read her my article. She was please. She says, that was for me. Dr. Dupree is going in and out. So um was interesting because she said that was for me. I needed that. Could you imagine? God-fearing young lady. All things do work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, but don't lose your cool. Don't, don't do something outside of your nature. My nature is not to curse people out, but I can I can I can get excited about something, but I never called her outside of a name and it caused her to do something that she would normally never do. And she said, you know, I I was I was um she says, I can tell when someone is telling me the truth. I do this all the time, and, and I could see you were passionate about it, but you never ever blame me or demean me or said anything out of the way. And when she called and she had to give the special investigators additional information, the things that I shared with her, she shared with them and said, he did what any reasonable person would have done. And when they got that information, she said that they said, oh, that makes sense. So I'm saying to you tonight, that I want you to check yourself and see what comes out of you when you're squeezed. 
health wise, financially, circumstances, situations, no matter what, look and see what comes out of you when you're being squeezed. Now, I'm going to bring in my guest. I read his bio. You know a little bit about him. He's a phenomenal individual. I'm glad he wasn't riding his bicycle because that's the reason he, he wasn't on the show the last time he was scheduled because he was riding a bicycle and had an accident. So I'm glad that he's late, but wasn't riding the bike. <laughs> so that's good. Now, Doc, I did this. I read your bio. They know a little bit about you, but tell okay. us something about you that we don't know and we really should know. Okay, I, I'm having technical difficulties right now. <laughs> but I can hear you. I can hear you and I can see you. Okay, all right. Well, I'm the, first, let me just say thank you, uh, Reverend Russell, for giving me this opportunity to join you and uh, and to all of your, you know, your audience. I'm delighted to be here. And yes, I did have that accident on uh, last year, it was in June, that I had an accident on my bike, and uh, the Lord has blessed me. It was a, mm -hmm. it was a, a frightening experience. It truly was a frightening experience, but I'm here. I'm still standing, as we used to say, in the pulpit. And God, uh, it, it's a it's a, a a miracle that God has brought mm. me through. So I got a, a a story to tell that I didn't have before, and so I'm delighted that uh, I still have an opportunity to share the good news about what God can do. Well, uh, uh, somebody trying to tell, I mean, a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, I know that's true. <laughs> so I, you, I don't know if you, you stated that I've been married now for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Come the 28th of this month, we'll be celebrating our 50th anniversary. So I don't mm -hmm. think you, you, you announced that. No, I didn't. I waited for you to tell that. You that's your story. <laughs> that's your story. I want you to tell your own story. Uh, you know, the last time you yeah, the last time you were on, we had a lot of love going on. So right. yeah, thank you for sharing that. 50 years is no is no easy task. That's right. Yeah. Then again, let me apologize for the technical issue that I'm I'm continuing to have. And I don't know why it was working well today, as you know. Yeah, it was working fine. It was yeah, working great. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. I tried to go off several times and come back on, thinking that would that would solve my problem, but obviously it has not. So let me let me turn off the background. Maybe that will help. There you go. Okay. Bang. Yep. Okay. That worked out very well. Background, just my green screen. Okay. All right. You with me? Or am I with I'm you? I'm with you. I, we can hear you. We, everything is fine. We can see here. You're not. You're not. You're not. You're not fading in and out. You're not ghosting on us. You look great. It's good to see you. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm. I'm living down in Delaware with a New York hat on. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living the retired life now, uh, Doc, and and I'm, I'm enjoying it. Enjoying it. You know, every day is is a new experience. You know, actually, we have not connected with a, a church, per se, but every Sunday we're going to a different church. And, uh, you know, it's been interesting. I mean, there's a lot of churches down here that we're truly uh, appreciating. Well, that's good. I know that I was in Delaware a number of years ago. I preached, actually, at a, con at a convention down in Delaware. So that was an interesting, that was a very, very interesting time for me. And um, that that was, um, wow. Um, see, I left in two, probably more like 2011, oh. 2012. Okay. That's okay. been 10 or so more years. Yeah, at least that long. At least that long. Oh, okay. I'm getting ready to say, why didn't you tell me? You know I would have been there for you. Well, you know, no, I, that was when I was, that's when I was doing the work with the Southern Baptist Convention. Right, right. And I was traveling all the time and stuff okay. like that. So mm -hmm. they, I, I'd done it there. I preached in uh, Maine and, um, you know, several other places, which was really nice. Um, Ohio. And, you know, I got a chance to move around quite a bit, which was really, really nice. 
Okay. And uh, be in different communities. Right. Yeah, those are great yeah. days. Those are really interesting days. And, and I, I thank you because if it wasn't for you, I would have never had the opportunity. Well, you and I mean that out. sincerely. I made it. I mean that sincerely because the the mm -hmm. the, the, the conference that um, that I met the individuals who sort of facilitated my introduction to the organization, I wasn't even going to come to. And you called me and said, "I need you here." <laughs> and you said, "I got you covered. I got you. Come." And I came. Wow. Came, I went over to Newark Airport, went to the hotel, and I was there, met some folks, had one resume, one resume in my Bible that I was able to give to Chris <laughs> McNeary. And Chris turned that over okay. to 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 Carl uh to to uh Carl Dietz. Carl Dietz called me. The next thing I knew, a couple of months later, I was now then working for the Southern Baptist Convention at the North American wow. Mission Board. And it was because yeah, of what you did. Well, I, I'm, I'm um, on it. I was there for I'm seven on. years to the day. Okay, okay. I was there seven years. I've been gone now ten. So this year, the um um the the October twenty eighth, excuse me, August twenty eighth will be ten years exactly that I've not been there. I've left okay. ten years. Wow. Uh, but I again, I say you made us very it proud. Was definitely, an experience. you really stood out, and you you did you did a great job there. I'm sure. Uh, I'm surprised that you you're not still working there, but we know about situation. We know how right, right, right. Squeeze, squeeze, yeah. squeeze hey, out, squeeze, squeeze out. out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> how, how appropriate so, is that? Exactly. And you know what's what's interesting, right? Is that 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 is considered that can be considered that's that was a job that literally I, I had never gotten a bad evaluation in, never did anything. That was other than you know really good for the organization, but yet um, I was still released, right. along with a whole lot of others as well. Uh, right. They decided they wanted to go in a different direction, and, and then then you ask yourself, right? So th that kind of thing happens. Your job situation changes. You're out, and then you say, well, how am I going to make a living? I still have to pay bills. I still have things to do. Right. And right. then it's it's easy to point a finger. That's right. It was their fault. They did this. But you know, what I got out of it okay. was worth its weight in gold. That's right. I, I could not have gotten that experience anywhere else. Anywhere else. And, and, it, and it taught me so much about myself. About myself. Um, how comfortable are you in different cultures and different environments and, and doing things a little bit differently than you had done in, in your entire life and still being effective at it, you know? So I, I appreciate the opportunity. And the interesting thing is, you know, seven is the number of completion, right? <laughs> Biblical, well, we, 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 we know that, we, we read that, we study that. Well, I was there literally seven years to the day. Wow. And, and you can't make this stuff up, you know? I mean, I, I'm sure nobody sat down and said, okay, on this day, we're going to do it. That would be seven years exactly. That's when we're going to do it. They didn't do that. Right, the right. Lord orchestrates that. Right, right. And when I thought about it, I said, you know what? I said, it's the time that was supposed to have been spent there was spent there. It's time to go. Right. Now we what know. do you do? Right. We know that all things work together for good. Absolutely. That love God. Absolutely. All Absolutely. Purpose, according to his purpose. And, 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 and watch this. This is interesting, right? I have not had another salary paying job since I left. What? Yeah, nope. you're still standing. You're still standing. I'm still standing. Amen. And doing and doing and doing, you know, the Lord I'll is still blessing me. Right. Yep. And I don't have to, I don't have to compromise <laughs> on my integrities because of somebody else's um, um, uh, responsibilities. Right. you know, or their desires. I don't have to do that. I don't have to, I don't have to bend. Um, you know, I can bend, but I don't break because I, it's, it's my choice. And, and right. I think that was something that the Lord had to reveal to me that, listen, I told you I would take care of your every right. need according right. to my riches. And Woo! You, you preaching, know? Doc, you're preaching. And, and so the squeeze, the squeeze 
Okay. What comes out of you when you squeeze, right? What comes out of you? That's right. Uh, if you got, if you got, if you got the Holy Spirit in you, that's what comes out of you. If you don't, you know, I, you know. Go ahead. I, I, I'm not supposed to be no, doing all this talking. No, <laughs> no, you, 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 good. You, you, you stimulate me, Doc. But you know, it, uh, another thing come, comes out when you when you squeeze if, if you don't have the the Lord on your side, and that is worry and and depression and everything else. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you you know when you have the Lord on your side, God says, "Be cool, you know, stand right. still, right. stand right. still, and see the salvation of the Lord." And he'll bring you through. So it was like a red yeah. sea that you were standing in front of. I can I can recall in my own experiences that there were times when I did not know what was going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And the Lord just said, "Don't worry, don't worry." I, I I often tell the story about when Nikki was born. You know, you know. Do you did you ever mm -hmm. tell? Uh, I think I to me, tell, tell it to me again. Tell it to me again. I want to hear. It. I was squeezed. I was squeezed. Well, anyway, I was in my last year in seminary. Mm. And, uh, you know, Loretta comes to me and says, uh, you know, I hate to tell you this, but, <laughs> but we we about <laughs> to have a child. And I'm saying, oh, man, I can't afford, because she was the only one working at the time. And, you know, we were in Princeton and, you know, everything was going well. And I said, oh, man, I got to go back and ho home now before I graduate. And, you know, I have to tell my folks that I can't do this now because a child is coming. Mm. God said, God said, don't worry. Don't worry. I got you. Loretta had to stop work. We both were not. We, we were both unemployed. Wow. But wow. God, God somehow paid that tuition and I made that last year. And that, that's when I finished and came to New York City and met you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 Yeah, because I met you. I uh, was free. I <laughs> huh? I yeah. Was free. I was worried, but the Lord said, no, you know, just be calm. Yep. Yep. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's and that's the thing I think that that we need to recognize all the time. Okay. There's no reason to panic. Right. right. And, and a lot of a lot of what comes out of us. Wait a is, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, though. There's no reason to panic if God is on your side. I think you gotta throw that in there, Doc. If God I agree. is on your side. I agree. If God <laughs> is on your side. So that I I I, I wasn't quite finish that but okay. i got it you're absolutely right uh when you when you know who's you are okay okay there's no reason to panic and then you know you can endure things that happen around you they're not happening to you this is happening around you right you know right. as i said um you know when they let me go nobody sat down and said okay on this day it will be seven years exactly and we're going to release him on that day because we want to upset him we want him to you, you, no nobody did that uh-huh it just it just the lord orchestrates things Absolutely. so that he can get so he can be glorified that's right so had i taken it i i remember this i i, I had chat with you about that too i was like you know lord um you know doc um i i i, I, I was released Mm -hmm. Now they gave me a severin, which was nice. And I said to them, I said, "Yeah, but then I still won't have a job, right?" So, so, so I got a severance, but with the severance, I still won't be have, have a job. But for some reason, you know, when I prayed to the Lord, I, I, you know, He said, He said, "Don't look for another job." Wow. And I was like, "But Lord, I got I, I got." He said, "Don't look for mm -hmm. another job." Okay. All when right. the severance ran out, and I mean, they gave me almost a year severance, which was highly unusual. But when it ran out, you know, and I, I was praying earnestly, Lord, show me what you want me to do. See, and he you said- be, You were being squeezed. Yeah, I was being <laughs> squeezed. He says, what you're doing is important. Keep doing okay. it. Okay. And what was I doing? I was doing church consulting, right? I was talking to churches, helping okay. them to plan, organize. I, I do church finance. I help get loans together. I help them to strategize for growing their church. I train trustees. I do evangelism training. You know those. Right. I remember. Things. I've been, I've done them all over the country. 
He right. said, continue to do that. And so I looked at my life. I said, okay, I used to have the JLR company was still there when I did financial services. Right. So I revived my financial services. I don't do it extensively, but if somebody needs it, I'll do insurance and annuities and that kind of thing, health insurance, disability. I'll do that, but not. I'm not focusing on it. My focus is on helping the church to become right. solid from a business perspective. And the Lord said that, and I did that, and he has provided for all of my needs. And yeah. as you know, Doc, I've been blessed. I, I don't, I've not really been without a place to preach in my entire preaching career. All right. And now you pastor in two churches. <laughs> yeah, how about that? How about that? Mm -hmm. Not technically. I mean, technically, I'm not their pastor at all. But all I'm right, right. Leading them. Okay. I'm leading them and I'm giving them the guidance okay, that they okay. need, which is which is actually in line with what the Lord told me to do. Okay. Right. He said, do what you've been doing. Yeah. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'll let them worry about that other stuff. You know, if they decide to call me as pastor and the Lord says, yes, right. I'll do it because I'm, I'm literally doing what the Lord tells me to do. I'm not doing anything on my own anymore. But my God, what the Lord tells me to do. But my God shall supply yeah. all your needs according to his riches. Amen. According yes. to his riches in glory. That's right. No matter how squeezed you might feel that you are. In your situation, I'm also reminded of another story in the Bible, Doc, uh, with um, I believe it was Elijah that uh, was, was he had prophesied, and Jezebel and Ahab got after him, and he mm -hmm. he had to go to the uh, the brook, the dry brook. That's right. That's and, right. And, and the brook was flowing at one point, but after a while. He got squeezed. <laughs> you know, I'm sure. I'm sure he didn't That's know right. was gonna come and, out and, of and here. I mean, he ran to he, <laughs> he ran to the mountains, right? And God said, "Don't worry, I got you, man. I got you." Yep. And so it's yep. been stories like that that have uh, really uh, inspired me to realize that you know all, all things do work together for good. You know, and, and if you trust them. If yeah. you're and yes, there will be times that you, you in your natural state, it, you know, natural once you get squeezed to feel that you don't have no way to go, you know? Right, uh, right. I heard Johnny right, right. Youngblood, Johnny Youngblood speak, uh, preach down here not too long ago. And he was talking about that story when the children of Israel were at the Red Sea after they had left Egypt. And he, his title was, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, here they were standing in front of the Red Sea, Pharaoh's army coming to get them nowhere to go. Yeah. God said, stand still. Stand still. They were squeezed. I can talk about squeeze Moses. Yes, Why? Why would you do this to us? We could have been, we, we could have been safe in Egypt. But yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You know, I had, you know, Dr. Youngblood was a guest on my show a few weeks ago. Oh, really? About a month or so ago. Yeah, yeah, look it up. It, he's there. He's okay. We, it was, okay. it was, it was awesome, awesome, awesome show. But okay. uh, what you're saying is true, and he and he talked about that uh, okay. during 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 that show in terms of um, his uh, or that episode during you know uh, about the the children of Israel standing with their backs against the wall, and and now. I'm talking about stressed, squeezed. Uh -huh. um, by the way, Regina, you know, one of your other daughters in faith is on with us. And she says, but do we who know God sometimes get caught in panic momentarily? Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's by design, Doc. I think it's by design. Sometimes God has to put us in situations where we feel squeezed and we don't know what to do. And the only thing we can do depend on him right there you go yep yep i'm leaning and depending there now it's go. interesting Gl gloria said something interesting gloria said when squeezed you become bitter or better okay that's the point that is the point but i want to i want to chat i want to i want to unpack that a little bit oh, i want to unpack it a little bit because because it down. If, it down. If, if you if squeezing if you become bitter or better, 
My question is, were you bitter before the squeeze so that you couldn't become better after the squeeze? Mm, are you asking? So the indwelling, right? Okay. What was in you when you were squeezed? Okay. If, if bitter came out, then bitter was there. True. If you become better, it's because there was something in there that had the potential of being good. And that's what began okay. to come out. You see what I'm saying? So, so I, I think that the squeezing doesn't make you to become. It okay. brings out what's in you, but it identifies what's in you. Okay. I you agree. know what I'm saying? So when you squeeze, you you know, now you know what's in you because you see the way you reacted to the situation or the circumstance. Absolutely. You you so now you know what's in you. Now you get the choice. Choose bitter. Okay. Or better. All right. And, and it kind of relates to what I, I, I kind of alluded to earlier today when we were talking. This, the old nature in us, we, you know, no matter how saved we are, the old nature is still in us. And if we're not growing in our relationship with God, that old nature might have a, a stronger hold on us than our new nature. Yeah. And so that yeah. old nature is what will react to some right. situations if we have not grown. So right. some folks may say that they're, they're, you know, they're walking in faith, but they're not growing in faith. Mm. And as a result, that their, uh, their old nature takes charge when they are squeezed, if you will. Right. Right. And we all have that old nature in us. I mean, we, it's not completely Absolutely. gone. I mean, Absolutely. when I was talking to, when I was talking to the young lady this evening, you know, that old nature was literally right there you, you know i mean it it was about ready to doc it was about ready to come up he was about ready to rear his ugly head i mean he was i'm telling you he was about ready to to bust out right and call and, and just and just you know use all those french words that i used to know and still do but 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 something held me back he said don't do that don't do that don't do that so yeah. i guess i had more of the spirit of god in me that I did the spirit of the day of, 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 of the devil. Okay. You know, so so God won out. Now yeah. sometimes he doesn't. I mean, I, I know earlier today when I was trying to get through to somebody, I was yelling. I know people heard me out. My window was open. I know they heard me yelling out this way. I know they heard me. Because uh -huh. I was yelling. I was not happy. But I wasn't yelling at anybody. I was just yelling because I needed to get it out of me because it was there. <laughs> and sometimes you have to do that. You know, you have to figure out a way. To, to get rid of that stuff that's in you. Maybe you want to yell, you want to scream, you want to run, you want to you want to just just pound your hands on something. Okay. If it's, that's what it takes, then do that. It's therapeutic, in other words. Sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. So 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 let's see. Let me see. A couple of people said some nice things here. Margaret says, "I pray and ask God to help me with the situation. Mm -hmm. It is important to stay prayed up." so you can handle the squeeze when it comes. And I agree with that. Margaret, they said, it's better to, uh, I, I like I like people like to quote this one and it's right, right? Okay. Let's stay ready so we don't have to get ready. Mm, that's right. So if you're always, if you sort of like prepare yourself daily, before I walk out of my door in the morning, there's some things I must do. Okay. I must do. I must read my Bible. I must do my meditation. I must do my prayers. And if, if time permits, I will exercise in the morning. I, I have to do that because yeah. I right. know that my day is going to be challenging. Okay. They always are. And okay. if I'm not, if I'm not already filled up, That's then right. you know what what life begins to extract okay. i've got nothing to lean on okay and my reservoir may run dry. Mm -hmm. so i try to put the water in before i have to, before it has to be taken out okay i think that's i know 
I, I, I think I that's good. You got, we've got, we as, I guess, uh, spiritual directors or spiritual leaders have to teach our people to, uh, you know, to develop a routine, yep. a, a spiritual routine mm. that will exercise that, that spirit in us. Because yes, we are. Every day we're going to be faced with challenges where we might find ourselves being squeezed. And as a result of, uh, of, of the exercise that we may, you know, put ourselves through, we'll be able to deal with those challenges. Those, right, 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 right. Those right. situations. Yeah. Uh, you know, with, uh, at, 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 at Grady Universal, okay. you know, we had a, that you, you created, you said that we do something, you said we equip Equip. saints that's right equipping the saints to win souls. And, uh, yep. to win souls for christ yeah and, and and that's important because you know if you have every business every business okay. has a um has a uh a, 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 you know a a, a a slogan that they use that defines them right? right every business okay um uh everybody personally needs that kind of a personal uh, a slogan that they use for themselves that tells them who they are. Mm -hmm. Everyone, right? right? So I have one um, and everyone else should have. Which, which really comes down to our purpose, our purpose. And you know, and you know, everybody, everybody should have it, but everybody does not have it. And I, that might be why it, it, our purpose is our foundation. Right. And that's right. one reason why when we are squeezed, we don't have anything to fall back on because we don't mm. remember what our purpose is. That's true. That's true. So, yes, I try to continue to, to uh, you know, emphasize with the people that I led that, that our mission, is, which is our purpose, is to e equip saints to win souls for Christ and equip them to be winners. Winners, not only winners in the sense that, you know, they're winning some kind of a game, but winners in life, that when we face a, a situation that squeezes us, we're going to win. Because that squeeze situation is designed to make us lose, the losers. But we want to That's be... Right. That's right. Winners. That's right. That's right. And that was our basic... See, we need to be on mission, Right on mission all the time we need to be a we need to keep our mission in mind so okay. statements all right i'm gonna tell you what my mission statement is you can create your this is my mission statement okay. i am the best man doing the best ministry as a disciple and an ambassador for christ to help okay. sinners work out their soul salvation and mm -hmm. to encourage believers so that they Ooh. can strengthen their christian walk there you go now, with that, right, everything that I do, I think about that. Yeah, is right. this helping me to perpetuate who I say I am? Foundation. Best man doing the best ministry as an ambassador and a disciple of Christ to right. help sinners work out their soul salvation yeah. and to encourage believers so that they can strengthen their Christian walk. Now, That's deep. I have been living, living my life in a way now that if I find myself in a situation where I'm not able to do that, I'm not going to do that thing, whatever that is, because it's, it doesn't fit into the parameter of who I okay. say I am in God's in right. God's divine order. Right, right. If it fits in there, then, then mm -hmm. I will know it and the Lord will make space for me to do it. Right. Right. If it's not, if it's not intention for me to do it, then the Lord won't provide an opportunity for me to do it. Okay. Yeah, and you'll do it well because it fits your the criteria that you have established for yourself. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Because if you don't, if and you you alluded to this, right? If you don't know who you are, then any old body will do. That's right. You know, you see somebody and they're doing something you think you like. You want to do. You want to be them. Right. And then you want to be them. Then you want to be them. You want to be them. So mm -hmm. you you don't know quite who you are. 
And so you just try to be everybody. Right, right. And, and you so can't when, be everybody. And then coming back to your, your thought, when you are squeezed, then that which is in you. Exactly. Will come out. And that which is in you is what, is what you have tried to copy from somebody, what is in somebody else. Exactly. Right. You can't do it. You it's like it's like a that. looted person. Go ahead. Right. Right. Remember Sybil? Remember the movie Sybil? Had about all those like 19, 20 different personalities in her. All right. 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 So when the squeeze came, any one of those characters could have came out. That's right. Right. So you could be like Sybil. You could have multiple personalities in you because you've not figured out who you are in the Lord. So you're trying to be everybody else. And when the squeeze comes, what comes out of you is your dysfunctionality. That's right. Right. That's right. You don't know who you are. So anything can rattle your cage. Right. So what are we saying, Doc? Are we saying that people ought to try to come up with some some mission statement for themselves? That, yes. And you come up with a mission statement for yourself when you examine yourself and see who you are. Now, you know, I, I, uh, I do this thing in the financial services area, um, budgeting, right? Budgeting. Nobody likes to do budgets because it means that you can't do stuff. It means restrictions and stuff yeah, like that, right? Limitations, right. Right. So what I tell people, I say, well, don't think about it as a, as, a, as a budget. Think about it as a spending plan. How are you going to spend your money? You decide how you're going to spend it, where it's going to go, so that you're not tempted by all those other things that come to you. Right. Because you said, but that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I said. I'm going to spend my money on. So that's if good. you said it and you meant it and that can't tempt you. That's a good analogy. Now, but here's good. the here, here's the challenge. Right. They said, but where do I start? I said, that's a great question. Let's start from right where you stand. OK, let's do let's do a reverse spending plan. OK, what do you mean? I said, what you do is I want you to I want you to carry around a little pad with you. Right. Everywhere you go, carry a little pad. Low writing pad could look like this. Low writing pad. Every dime that you spend, I want you to write it down. Right, right. Every single kind of, if you buy bubble gum, write it down. Okay. Everything you spend. Do that for a week. Now, and if you if you pay a bill, matter of fact, you need to do it for a month because some of your bills you're gonna pay, you're gonna send a check or you're gonna do it electronically, but you need to record every single thing you spend. Don't change anything. Just go what you normally would do and write everything down. At the end of the month, categorize all of those things that you have spent. Put them in categories. Candy at the candy store, uh, my hair, my right. nails, my food, my lunch, my transportation, everything put in its order. Then go back over that. And now you create a budget. Multiply that out by 12. Now you know what you spend in each one of these areas. <laughs> right, right. And I guarantee you, you'll find that you throw money away that you didn't even know you had. Absolutely. I mean, you throw it away. I mean, just throw it away. Just, just toss it away because you're buying stuff without being conscious of it. Right. So now you've got the essence of your spending plan. Now right. you go back and say, okay, what's my priority? I don't want to do these things anymore. Then you can eliminate them because you That's know what right. they are. Right. So, right. so, so you create a mission statement. There you go. And by looking at what you do, that's why I said, what comes out of you when you're squeezed? Well, that's you right. have to, you can't say, I'm not going to do these things anymore because for the most part, you're not aware of what comes out of you because you never paid attention to it. It just comes out. That's good. But if that's you pay good. attention to it and you write it down, you say, okay, these are the things I want to change. Right. right. And if you write them, list them out, now, the next time you are squeezed, you say, I'm not going to do that. I know I do that. I'm not going to do that. Let me, let me just recalibrate. Let me rethink that. Let me take, let me count the 10, like my mama used to tell me to do. Yeah. Let me count the 10 before I open up my mouth. There you go. And then we can get started. Right. Now okay. you have the essence of, of your, your, you know, you have the essence of, of, of restructuring, rebuilding and creating a statement of your purpose in life. There you go. I, so I, by I, the way, now, Listen, let me do this because I, since I've got the floor, I, I want to. Um, it's it's nine o'clock. Okay. At the top of the hour, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen again. I'm okay. gonna go. We're going to go back. I'm gonna introduce and and talk about um you know give my sponsors and advertisers. I'm gonna read the article again, 
and we're going to come back. And in this, this half of the show, what we're going to do is we're going to look more intently at what's being said on um, the Facebook side, and we're going to bring their comments into our conversation. I like it. I like it. All right. So you can, if you want to, you can, you can, you can go ghost on us for a few minutes and I'm going to, you know, do what I do. And then we'll come back and we'll finish out the, the, you know, the episode or this, this segment with okay. power and impact. All right. All right. All right. Sounds do, good. Sounds good. Do what you do, do what All you right. do. Don't forget to support our advertisers and our sponsors the JLR Company and J. Lauren Russell Consulting, LLC, for all of your church financial consulting needs. Check out our website, www.jlorenrusselconsulting.com. That's www.jlorenrusselconsulting.com. Or simply give us a call, 718-328-8096. 718-328-8096. If you want to train your trustees, if you want to develop your property, if you need a church loan, give us a call. We'll be there to help. Matters of Faith, the book, can be purchased at my cash app, dollar sign Matters of Faith. The cost of the book is $22.80. That's $22.80. You can send your check of money order to the JLR Company, Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. That's Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. Get the book. It will absolutely bless your life. You can also get it as an ebook. All you need to do is go to www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. That's www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. The book has no shipping and handling if you get it as an ebook. And also check out the Eat Okra app for all black owned restaurants all over the nation. That's right, Eat Okra. Really? And finally, subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. And now the article, Squeeze. That article can be found in my column, Matters of Faith, at www.thebronxchronicle.com. That's www.thebronxchronicle.com. Just scroll down till you find my article, Squeeze. And it also can be found in the Yonkers Insider newspaper, online newspaper at www.yonkersinsider.blogspot.com. That's yonkersinsider.blogspot.com. Remember, Squeeze. Luke chapter 6, verses 43 through 45 from the New King James Version. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Squeezed. What do you get when you squeeze a lemon? Now that's a facetious question that really doesn't require an answer. Everyone knows that lemon juice comes out of a lemon when you squeeze it. You can't get grape, orange, apple, or any other type of juice out of a lemon because lemon is what's in it. Luke says in the text that a good tree does not bear bad fruit. In the same way, a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. He explains that trees are known by species and the types of fruit they bear. Even if fruit were not recognizable by their appearance, you would know exactly what type of fruit you have when they are squeezed. It will never be possible to get orange, apple, grape, or any other type of juice from a lemon. Luke broadens his comparison and looks at the human heart. He says clearly and emphatically, that a good heart produces good things, and an evil heart produces evil things. Like fruit, Luke says the human heart produces fruit according to what's in it. But unlike a fruit which is recognizable by its shape, color, and overall appearance, the human heart may be camouflaged, altering its true appearance and hiding its true content. What makes humanity so interesting? 
is that the content of the heart is made evident by a person's reaction and the words that come out of their mouths when someone says or does something that they don't like. To paraphrase Adrian Rogers from his book, What Every Christian Ought to Know Day by Day, if you squeeze somebody and anger spills out, they are full of anger. But if you squeeze someone and Jesus spills out, they are full of Jesus. Anger is another way to describe sin. Jesus speaks for himself. It is easy to determine whether your heart is full of anger or Jesus. Just watch how you respond and listen to the things that come out of your mouth when you are squeezed by the challenges of life. In our often chaotic, turbulent, and troubled world, let me suggest that we do a self-check to see what comes out of us when we are squeezed. Be blessed. And my question again, what comes out of you when you're squeezed? One more time. What comes out of you when you're squeezed? Matters of Faith family, you know my guest. He's not new to the Matters of Faith family. In fact, he's my pastor. So, without further ado, let me bring back so we can finish out this episode with strength, vitality, and a whole lot of conviction, Reverend Dr. Daniel Dupree. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm going to leave that up for just a minute. Let everybody get a good look at you. Okay. <laughs> they get a good look at you. So, and while they're looking at that, let me let me share this with you as well. Let me share this. I want to make sure that um, everybody sees this. One of the things I do in the morning um, is I read um, passages from the Bible. And I always read whatever day of the month it is. I will read that chapter from the book of Proverbs. Okay. Here's the 17th. Okay. And today I read the 17th chapter of Proverbs. Okay. I want to read something to you um, from verse 23 to 28, the end of it. The whole, the whole chapter is phenomenal, but listen to this. A wicked man accepts a bribe behind the back to pervert the ways of justice. Wisdom is in the sight of him who has understanding, but the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her who bore him. Okay. Also, to punish the righteous is not good, nor to strike princes for their uprightness. These last two I really love. He who has knowledge spares his words, and a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. Mm. When he shuts his lips, Woo! he is considered perceptive. Okay. So I like the way Coolio, the rapper, said it. He said, it's better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So that that that's that's a thought. And that that's one of the things that I do regularly. Now, um, I, like I lost my big screen. I lost my big screen. So I'm looking at your comments on my little screen, guys. So if I don't see it right away, it's because I have to now examine my little phone here as opposed to seeing it on the screen, don't know what happened, but um, uh, I'm going to look at your comments and then bring you into our conversation. But Dr. Dr. Dupree, um, thank you so much for being here. Would you do me a favor and just sort of pick up where we left off and just talk a little bit about um, that, that squeeze that occurs when you least expect it? Okay, well, I think uh, I alluded to that story where Elijah found himself uh, at the brook and he did not, I mean, the brook, brook was flowing richly, mm -hmm. you know, and all of a sudden, just abruptly, it stopped flowing and he just did not know what to do. And so it was like unexpected, as you say, it was unexpected. So God was, uh, was doing something to cause him to worry. And I said, mm. I think I said earlier that sometimes we're squeezed by God. And God squeezes us to make us depend on him. Yep. Yep. That's you for know? sure. And so that's that's when you know if Jesus is in you, you trust God. If you if if he's not, then you try to come up with some kind of an alternative 
that mm. you know, that you can solve your own problem. And the long, you know, the, the truth is you can't. You can't, especially when God wants you to, to solve it. And so in that story, um, you know, Elijah was told, all right, it, it's dried up. You've got to move on. And, and that's true with a lot of situations. I think it, it really is related to what you talked about mm. in your work with the Southern Baptists. You know, there comes a time when your brook dries up. That's right. That's you right. know, and you can get very... It says go to, go, go, go to Sarafat. That's right. <laughs> go on over to the other side, you know. <laughs> you can't stay in no longer. And, you, and, and God is saying, Trust me, you know, just like, you know, the children of Israel at the Red Sea, God is saying, trust me. But then you, mm. if you don't know God that well, you say, I can't trust you. But, you know, wait, I've had enough experiences in my life to know that, you know, there's going to be situations where unexpected situation where right. I've got to trust God because my education ain't going to do it. My friends, my background is not going to do it. Only God, yeah, only right. God in some situation. Right, 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 right. No doubt about it. You're absolutely 100% correct. Some things, only God. You know, yeah. like he told, uh, he told, um, it was interesting because he, 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 Jesus told his disciples, that why couldn't we cast out those right. demons? Okay. And he said, some things only That's by right. prayer and fasting, only. That's right. That's right. And so some things will only take place when spirit of the living God is moving, is really, really moving. And, and, and that and that and that of course means you because you know we are moving, we just finished, we just finished Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday right. in the Christian Absolutely. faith. Right. And now we await the, the 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 we await the um you know the great day when the Holy Spirit came, the day of Pentecost, which takes place 50 days after Resurrection Sunday. 50 days. Mm. And at that point, the church was established because the people were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled. Now they could do what they couldn't do before. Now they could go forth and proclaim and declare and do the miraculous work that the Lord has assigned to them because now they had power from on high. The power came from what was on the inside, not on the outside what came from the inside they were now filled now they could do the work prior to that they weren't equipped they didn't even believe they were still having trouble believing yeah but once the yeah. spirit of the living god came in there once that spirit and and just empowered them and went inside now they could get things done i mean because they were they were squeezed but they had enough jesus in them that, exactly you know, exactly to the article right and the squeeze think about that right they were still, they were still in, in, in the room. They were scared of the persecution. Okay. Squeeze. Squeeze. Right. So that, that's the amazing thing. Um, let, me, let me share some of the things with you that I'm looking at. Um, right, let me hear it. Let uh, me hear it. Gloria says, you don't get wormy apples off a healthy tree, nor good apples off of a diseased tree. Okay. Think about that. Are you healthy or are you diseased? Mm. Regina says humanity is interesting because we often meet the ambassador and the real person only emerges when one is squeezed. Jesus that's not, that's will only come true. out if it was the planted seed in your spirit in the first place. Okay. No seed, no growth. Right. No seed, no growth. You, you can't get what you never had. Wow, and you can't was... lose what you never had, and you can't go back to something, go back to a place that you've never been. So Kevin, Kevin says, when I am squeezed, what comes out could be anxiety, happiness, and leadership. It may depend on day, time, and the situation. You want to talk about that, Doc? That's a good one. I like that. He says, it may be circumstantial what comes out of me. Hey, yeah, so just repeat that whole thing for me. Yep. When I am squeezed, okay. what comes out could be anxiety, happiness, yeah. right. and leadership. Right. It may, be, it may depend on day, okay. time, and the situation. Woo! Yeah, I think I think that's very appropriate. You know, uh, as I stated earlier, sometimes it could be worry. 
it could be worry, but that, uh, in those situations, it, it, it could be. I mean, you, you mentioned the word situation. It could mm -hmm. be a situation that God has orchestrated just to teach you something. Mm. Sometimes you're squeezed by God to teach you something. And you can thank God for those kinds of situations. But again, a, a lot depends on what is in you. If if there is enough God in you, then you'll be able to weather that storm without cussing. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Uh, by the way, I'm going to say Michael, I mean, excuse me, Kevin follows that up. He says, my girlfriend makes me mad when okay. she squeezes me. Woo. And yet I still love her for some unknown reason. <laughs> okay. So, so here's what I would say. I would say this, right? Um, you know, we, we we're talking about being filled with, with, with the, you know, filled with the Spirit of the Lord, with love and compassion and all of these things. But the real question is, how do you get there from here? I mean, how do you really get to a point where you're really filled with the Spirit? How yeah. does that happen? Well, you know, you know, I mean, is, is it say, you know, do we just say, Lord, fill me with your spirit and all of a sudden it happens? No, no, no. What literally has to take place? And I did, re I did allude to that earlier. I, I mentioned the fact that, you know, it depends on our growth in our, our, our relationship. Our growth in our relationship with God, you know, and you know, that old nature and that new nature, you know, they, they are both in you. And so when you become a, a, a new creature in Christ, the, uh, the, uh, the new nature is just a baby. So that baby mm -hmm. has to grow up to make that, to, you know, to cause that old nature to move out. Mm. And some, it takes longer than others. There you go. That's right. Some, it happens quickly. Some mature, you know, some children mature faster than others. That's right. Some don't mature until they become old. Right. Some and never mature. I you think know, we got, a lot of, we got a lot of children dying, dying of old age. There you go. And that relates to what you said in the article, you know, either anger or Jesus, you know, uh, that anger could relate to the old nature and that mm -hmm. Jesus could relate to the new nature. So what is growing? You know, yep. and the, yep. it's always yep. there. Like you, like you, yeah, as you said earlier, there's that battle that's taking place in us, that battle in us, you know, a battle for our soul. Oh, that reminds me. Okay. There's a story okay. about, a, about an old Indian chief. He was walking along with his grandson. Okay. His grandson said, Grandpa, what's the secret of life? They walked along a little further, and grandson looked at him and says, Well, son, everyone has two wolves living in them. Ooh. Grandson looked and said, Two wolves. He said, Yeah, two wolves. One is evil, and the other was good. Okay. One wants to destroy, and the other wants to create. And they're both fighting for position and they're both hungry they're at war with each other okay and the little boy they walked along a little further said well grandpa if they're at war which one will win and his grandfather looked at him and said the one that you feed mm, right yeah we have we have the choice, bitter or better. When you squeeze, you see it coming out of you, a reversed spending plan. We see what we do. But in order to make the change, we have to decide who we want to be. We know that evil's always present. Right. But if and you continue to give vent to it. the to the wicked, then that's what's going to develop. That's it. And that basically is what I said with the old nature. If we continue to feed that old nature, right. that's right. going to come out when we're squeezed. Mm -hmm. We feed that new nature, 
eventually, I mean, that will come out when we're squeezed. What else you got? Let me hear what some of the people in the audience are saying. Well, let's see what we got here. So we got Kevin, Regina. We must continually pray for the spirit of the living God to fall you know. fresh on us, to help us in our times of our squeeze. All right. And I think that's what you you said. You you raised that question, too. How do we develop that Jesus? And like, well, we got to have spiritual discipline. Hmm. And you know the spiritual discipline that you teach all the time. Prayer and, uh, you know, uh, studying the word. Mm -hmm. and Meditation. Yeah, yeah. Spending time with the Lord, listening to his turning, voice. Turning your, turning your plate over sometime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Regina said to Michael, or to, um, not to Michael, but I keep, but to Kevin. Regina said to Kevin to, um, Pad and pen, my brother, to write down all the reasons why you love her as a star. <laughs> okay. And then Gloria says, what happened here? Gloria says, without inward changes, no man can do God's will and fulfill his purpose. Oh, by the way, no woman can either. <laughs> Make it plain, Doc. Make, Make it, it plain. plain. That's right. That's right. And then Regina says, the choice is ours to make. What do we want to see come out of us? Prayer and fasting will help. And that's true. If, 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 if you want, you know, whatever you want in life requires work. Whatever you decide that you want to do is going to require work. Um, if you decided that you wanted to be a drug pusher, requires work. Whatever you decide to do is going to require that you put something into it. I would recommend that you decide that you're going to be a true follower of Jesus Christ or whomever you serve in whatever way you do, but certainly a spiritual power higher than your own That's because right. you can't live this life on your own terms. No matter what Frankie, Frank Sinatra said, I did it my way. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. If, if we knew how to do it, we wouldn't be in the pickle that we're in. Yeah. I'm talking about worldwide, everywhere. And then it was something I read recently. Um, matter of fact, it's right in front of me. Uh, William Matthews said this, the difficulties, hardships, and trials of life, the obstacles are positive blessings. They knit the muscles more firmly and teach self-reliance and how to, and I'm going to add this, how to depend on the Lord. Okay. You know, so the trials, the tribulations, the hardships, the obstacles are there to be a blessing to you. Okay. What you learn from what you go through, right. who you become is so important. Absolutely. Unless, of course, you get stuck in it, you know, and you say, well, woe is me. Why did this happen to me? Now, everything's always happening to me. And you start going through that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, everything is against you. Everybody's against you. Mm hmm. And you literally, you just kill yourself in misery. That's tough stuff. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But I like the illustration, though. Whatever you, whichever side you're feeding is mm -hmm. going to be what's going to come out of you when you squeeze. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You will That's know right. them by their fruit. That's right. You shall know them by the fruit. Mm hmm that's exactly right. Let's see what else we got. Okay. Go Kev, Kev, Kevin said, thank you, Reverend Regina. Regina okay. said, the choice is ours to make. What we do, or what do we want to see come out of us? Prayer, yeah. fasting will help. And then Gloria says, we must worship and serve God in spirit and in truth. Is that's what that we got so far. Regina? Is that Regina Hoyt? Yeah, yeah, that's Regina Hoyt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
You didn't tell That's me that. Told. Hey, baby girl. <laughs> I told you I did. I said I said one of your one of your children. I said it's one of your daughters in ministry. Okay, I know you. I thought you was referring to. I know she did the show recently. Yeah, yeah, but I said she was on, so she's oh, here with us. She's here with okay, us. Okay, all right. Well, that's so. Well. Listen to this. Listen to this by this gentleman. Um, his name is Gerald uh, Jampolsky. He says, "If we perceive things not as problems, but rather as opportunities for learning, okay, okay. we can experience a sense of joy, thank you, and well-being when the lessons are learned. We are never presented with lessons until we're ready to learn them." Okay. So maybe the trials and the squeeze that you have in your life is time for you to make a change. Okay. Maybe that's why you got them. Okay. And that again relates to the verse that we, we raised earlier, Romans 8, 28. We know, we right. know that's right. that all things work together for good to, to them that love God. So again, you got to look at your squeeze situation and ask yourself, what good is going to come out of this? Right. What good? I mean, that's that's from a from a faith perspective. I know right. that I'm doing. I'm going through this for a reason. Help me yep. to understand what that reason is. That's right. That's right. Help me to understand it. What do you? What am I supposed to learn from this? There you know, you if we were to ask ourselves this question, right? Whatever you're going through, good or bad, ask yourself the question: What, Lord, what am I supposed to learn while I'm here? There you go. If we ask that question, I believe that we would avoid a lot of the problems that we face in humanity as human beings. We would not respond so um, emotionally to things. Mm -hmm. We'll be more thoughtful about things and we'll think about it more introspectively rather than placing blame on somebody. Absolutely. We'll be looking to you know, to say, how can I become better? Because the better I am, the better I can serve others. And it's always yeah. about service. It's always about service. It's never about you. It's never been about you. It's always been about service. The Lord gave us these gifts and these talents because whom to whom much is given, much is required. Amen. Amen. And I, I believe that with all my heart. I really do. You know, as I said earlier, um, when you begin to really understand your call in life and your purpose, God will begin to un, 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 uncover things for you, like 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 the men who are walking with him down the mass down the um the, yeah. the, the Emmaus Road, right? And they right. could not recognize him, right? But when they began to understand the purpose of God's presence and what He meant, and their now purpose to also go forth and tell the world. Then they were able to recognize him and he opened up opportunities for them to share. Right, right. When we begin to recognize who we are, then we begin to see the opportunities that God has had around us all the while. They've always been there. We just didn't have the eyes to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he makes, and he gives, he gives time. He, he, he gives you the time to make all of those things manifest. You know, you can do like 15 things literally at the same time and do them all effectively if you're in your purpose. Right. And again, it goes back to what you said about uh, finances and budgeting. You know, if you know that you only have a a certain amount to work with you you don't go beyond that you don't overextend yourself right right and, right right and sometimes when we overextend ourselves we we put the squeeze on ourselves <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right we do it to ourselves you know you know i think I think Aretha Franklin made a song like that, right? We're doing it to ourselves. <laughs> I remember that song. But you're right. I mean, you're right. You know, we do it. We do. We put more pressure on us. We do more squeezing on ourselves than ever can come from the outside. Ever. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the out the outside things just kind of brings to light what's going on on the inside. Absolutely. There you go. You know, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Amazing. Um, 
I, I want I want to share a story, but I'm gonna say it in my closing. Okay. Um, you know, but I, but I, I was reading something right that that sort of put me in mind to you know what it is that we experience when we're going through squeeze period. You know, it's like falling down. So I read something um, in one of my my readings and stuff. It says, um, okay, whenever you you fall, pick up something. This attitude of error as part of the process of success, mm. along with endless determination, Professor Oswald Avery, a, bacto, a, a bacteriologist, worked for many years at Rockefeller Institute in New York City. And because he had this attitude that errors are part of the success process, yeah, after yeah. many, many years, Wow. Many great hypotheses that never came to anything. Okay. Discovered that DNA was the basic genetic material for everything. Now, the result of an, um, of an er error, right? Of multiple errors. Yeah. <laughs> multiple errors. Yeah. You know, a, a, a quote unquote successful person has failed at more things than the unsuccessful person has ever even tried. Mm. Okay. I mean, think about it. How many things do you attempt to do that you don't get done, right. but you attempt it anyway? Right. And it's not what you get for what you do, it's who you become. Right. That's the bit of better thing, right? Um, mm -hmm. It didn't work, but did I learn something? And if I learn something, when I go to my next project, I'll be able to not do that again. To so learn something. So, you know, I used to tell my sales agents, either you make a sale or you get a lesson. Okay. But don't walk out of there with nothing. Because if you don't learn something and you didn't make a sale that is to be quote unquote successful, and you didn't learn anything, now you failed because you came out with nothing. Okay. Right? So what did I learn in this process? So failing, quote unquote failing, is right. not is not a detriment to your success. Right. It's a building block. Right. I used to say that, you know, in the message that I, I would preach, I, I would throw in Michael Jordan's situation and how he failed, uh, you know, when he wanted to try out for his high school basketball. Mm. And he failed. I mean, he failed so bad that he got cut off yep. the team. And it was that failure that gave him a determination to work hard, to be successful. And so he became perhaps the best basketball player there is, there has been, you know. I, I know, I, I know. Folks say that LeBron James is, is the goat now, <laughs> but mm -hmm. you know. But it was Michael Jordan's failure that really propelled him yeah. to go out and become the giant that he became. And no doubt about it, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, um, Michael Jordan, um, when he was in college. North Carolina, North Carolina, right? Right. right. Um, the game was on the line. On the line. Michael Jordan was a was a rookie, sophomore. They had some of the best players in the country on that team, including James Worthy. Okay. And when it came down to crunch time, the last shot of the game that won them the game, you know who they gave the ball to? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan made the shot, won the game. Now, people don't necessarily see that all the time. I was watching um, some fights with Sugar Ray Leonard. All the times he got knocked down. You know, Sugar Ray Leonard stayed on his behind. Mm. He got knocked down a lot. But he didn't stay down. He kept getting back up. That's right. And all of those individuals who knocked him down lost to him. Okay. So he was one of the winningest fighters that ever fought in the game. 
despite the fact that he got knocked down on a regular basis. So just because you have a um a lapse okay. in your in your squeeze. All right, come on, come on. Don't quit. Don't quit on yourself. Yeah. yeah. You just you you just you just now know what you have to do to improve. That's right. You know what to pray for. Mm -hmm. You know what you need to study. You know what you need to add in order to make this thing right. Yeah. And what yeah. thing am I talking about? I'm talking about your life. Okay. Because the devil, the devil wants us to uh, to give up. You know? Absolutely. And when he squeezes us to the point where we say we give up on God, he won. Yep. But I, that's why I like that song by Donnie McClurkin. He said, we fall down, but yep. we get up. You yep. know, yep. some people, yep. when they fall down, they just stay down. But don't stay right. down. Get right. back up. Get back up. And get back the, up again. The Jesus in you that makes you get up after you've been knocked down. I get I I I'm with you 100 percent 100 percent Let me see. We got some more comments up in here. Okay. Um, let me see. I think I saw some other comments up in here. My daily question right now, Lord, and this season, what are you trying to grow in me? As Regina, in this season, in this season, what are you trying to grow in me? You know, you know, Regina, that's such a powerful position to be in. Because when, when you can ask yourself the question, then there's growth opportunities that exist for you, no matter what the circumstances are. Right. But when you stop asking the question that's when you start deteriorating there is there is a lot of um life in questions and 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 and, and answers can kill you let, let me let me let me, let me show you what i mean if you ask a question and you get a definitive answer you stop looking, your search is over. But if you live in the question, all right, you'll always be looking. You'll find you'll find gold all, all over the place. Because just because I got an answer doesn't mean that the question has been answered, answered. completely. Right. right. Keep looking, keep looking. It, it's the 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 the, 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 the essence of your growth and development lies in the questions that you ask yourself, not the answers that you get. Wow, that's good. That's good. You know, I'm always conscious of that because you, 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 you must always remember where your strength comes from. Your strength comes from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And the indwelling of the Holy Spirit comes because you seek him. All your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. And if you ask, you shall receive. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, the doors will be open. But without faith, it's okay. impossible to please God. So we without ought to be asking then our, our daily prayer ought to be, uh, Lord, to grow, help me to grow the Jesus in me. So that when I'm squeezed, you know, in, in the various vicissitudes of life, that Jesus will come out of me. Yes. As opposed to anything else. Right. Right. Bobby says, Bobby says, Pastor Russell, we need to understand this, that I can do all things that God, uh, through God who strengthens me. Okay. And there's no doubt about that. There's Amen. no doubt about that. 
And Regina says, when squeezed something to remember, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Plant these things in your spirit. Amen. Amen. I like I like the way you think. I like the way you think, Regina. You know that. That's why you're a girl. Love you. <laughs> you know, and because it, you know, it, because Paul Paul did something amazing. Paul said, "I plant a powers, but God gives the credit." So you're either planting, watering, nurturing, reaping the benefit of the harvest, or killing the tree. Because you could be maligning your own spirit by the words that come out of your mouth, by your attitude, by your disposition. You know, we often talk about people who come to church with 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 um with uh with, what's the word I'm looking for um with self motivating and, and uh, uh you know preconceived thoughts. Yeah, so it, yeah it don't matter what you preach it them matter what you do it because they come in and they'll leave the exact same way they came in they mm -hmm. have no intention of changing Ab none and they come in and before they get out of the door they'll say something that will reveal the contents of their heart mm. oftentimes they say it when they come in Mm -hmm. And they'll say something else on the way out, but you'll be able to see the contents of their heart. You know, and and, and you know, and, and the facade is that they're coming to worship, either virtually or in person. They show up, but they have no intentions of making any changes in their life. None at all. They won't do the inventory. They're not going to check to see whether or not um, you know, <laughs> they check to see what. What, what they need to make changes. They're not going to do that because they, they've already made up their minds that they're going to stay just the way they are. And so what did the Lord say at one point? He said that um, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is going to get in the kingdom. Can you imagine being in church 40 years, 50 years, and then when you stand before the Lord and he said, give an account of yourself. And he looks at you and said, I never knew you you of iniquity. Can you just imagine what that must be like? And then the rest of eternity, that you will be absent from the presence of God mm. because you never really were in his presence at all. Wow. That means you're not in the, in the presence even now then. You know, you might go right to, exactly you, right. Yeah, you, yeah, you go to church, but you you know they're not in his presence. So he mm -hmm. didn't know you. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, but Lord, I was in church. I, I I was at church every Sunday. I paid my tithes. Mm -hmm. I was an usher. I, I I I was I was I was on the choir. I sang glory to God. I I was I was a deacon. I was a trustee. I was a preacher. I preached in the pulpit. I never knew you. Mm. I don't know you. Or like the demon said, right? <laughs> or the demon say, we know Paul and we know Jesus, but who are you? <laughs> mm. And throw uh, was it the skeever and beat the, and beat the heck out of him. <laughs> you know, we know Paul and Silas, we know Jesus, but who are you? Man, nothing like falling into the hands of an angry God. Amen. Amen. So let's see. So let's see. Um, Gloria says, God knows your heart. That's true. That's true. Hey, Louise, how are you? Good to see you. So, so, Doc, listen. Okay. We got about 15 minutes, about actually 16 minutes left. We got 16 minutes. So what I want to do, I've, I've got a got a closing statement that I want to do. It takes about five or six minutes. But I want to give you as much time as you need. 
to share with us from your heart what you believe we really need to know. I'm sorry. We need to know yeah. about, about whatever, whatever you, whatever you want us to know. Whatever the Lord is speaking to your heart about, I want you to share with us, and then I'll then I'll finish off with my closing statements, and then we'll be done. But I, I want to give you ample time. All right. Well, I, I think the the bottom line uh, statement that I would make is is trust God. You know. Trust him no matter what you may be experiencing in your life experience, because my theme first really becomes that Romans 4, 8, 8, 28. We know that all things work together mm -hmm. for good to them that love God and are called according to his purposes. I've come, I've lived long enough to realize that, you know, no matter what I may be experiencing in my life experience, mm -hmm. It, it 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 is for a reason and i'm always yeah. asking the question lord what am i to learn from this experience you know maybe even even with the people that are, are away with it i'm trying to get get them in the right path i uh i'm trying to uh understand why they are in the situation that they are in you know what <laughs> why they might be squeezed the way they are. And I realized basically the uh, common denominator is that they just don't trust God. And so trust God means that, you know, even when you're going through situations that you don't understand, trust him, trust him. You know, uh, and when, you, when you feel like perhaps that old nature is taking charge of you. You, you, you. We, we, we need to just turn it over and say, God, you take, you take control of this. I can't handle this, but I know that you are in me. Take control. Take charge of this situation, because I believe that you're going to bring something mm -hmm. good out of it. I don't understand it, but I will understand it. Like the song we used to sing. We'll understand it better by and by. Yeah. By, by and by. by when the morning comes, go all the saints of God gathering home. We'll tell the story how we <laughs> overcome. I don't understand it now, but we'll understand it better. By and by. by, by. So don't, don't feel like you got to understand everything. Even when you find yourself in a situation where you just, you're squeezed and you feel like, mm. you know, you feel like you can't take it. Just uh, trust God enough to know that you'll understand it better by and by. Again, you know, we, you, you know, from my own experience, I just recently lost my daughter and Lord, and you know, yes. I my natural daughter a couple of years ago and tr truly you know it's it's one of those things that make you ask questions you know well, i don't understand it but i have to go back to that song i'll understand it better right all right you know right right right, right. and i i do understand we understand that stewardship means that we all have our certain amount of time. We all been given certain things and uh, uh, God expects us to use what we have mm. until, until we, uh, you know, our time is up. And I, I, I honestly believe doc that we have an assignment to accomplish. I, I, I recently preached one of the uh, last words. Yeah, and, and I, my my word was I thirst, and mm. said that scholars scholars have been wrestling it with uh, that statement. Why did Jesus make that statement? You know, and I basically came down. It came down to three things, and and they really relate to us. One is that Jesus said I thirst because he was thirsty to complete the prophecy that had been prophesied. Mm. And the point is, all of us have been prophesied to accomplish something before we 
leave this world. Mm -hmm. And God is going to work behind the scene to make sure that we accomplish what we have been sent to accomplish. And then he'll call us. Our work has been done. Some people, it takes longer to accomplish that prophecy. Mm -hmm. The second thing was, maybe Jesus was actually thirsty, but he didn't get, his, his need was still not met. He had a need for water, but it, it was not met. And we all know that water is something that we all need. But Jesus, it's comforting to know that Jesus had unmet need, and we mm. all have unmet need. Am I right about it, Doc? We absolutely, all have absolutely. Unmet need. And then the, the third thing was that, uh, yes, Jesus was saying, I thirst because I'm ready. I, I, I'm ready to deal with the pain, no matter mm. how painful this uh, conclusion has to be. I'm ready to deal with it. Bring it on, Father. Bring it on, Daddy. Mm. And so to get, it is with us when, you know, we have to understand, yes, there'll be times in our lives that we will be squeezed, but we have to say to God, yes, God, I understand that this is a painful situation that I'm dealing mm. with. But if it means that I'm going to bring glory to you, bring it on. Bring it on. And so that was basically what I shared in, the, in that message. But yeah, basically trust God. Trust God to help you accomplish the prophecy that has been written about you. Trust God to you know, to meet your need, even when your need is not being met. Hmm. Trust God to help you accomplish your mission. Yeah, no matter I love how. it. I love it. I love it. And that's, that's basically it. Again, it's been a joy hanging out with you, Doc. And I, I hope that, you know, I've been able to encourage you. And I want to encourage you to keep up the good work. You've been doing great, great work. And you... You know, you, you, I'm proud of you. Very proud of you. Well, thank you, bro. I tell you, if it wasn't for you, a lot of this stuff wouldn't even be happening because you helped me to, as they say, find my voice in ministry. So thank you so much. I owe you a lot and I'll never forget who you've been in my life. Uh, and if you don't have someone, guys, ladies that you can talk to to help you to sort of find who you are in ministry, uh, find you with Dr. Dan Dupree. Um, <laughs> Find you with Dr. Dan Dupree because he's been, he's been he's been he's been more than a friend. He's been more than a friend, more than a brother, more than a spiritual leader. He's been he's been um, you know I guess it doesn't get any higher than friend, right? So he's my friend. So Great. praise God for that. And by the way, didn't you say something about a book that you have? I did. I the last time I was going with you was on uh, Valentine's Day. In fact, Regina's birthday last year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we were, I was going with my wife, Loretta, and, you know, the ideas that we shared, you know, as we de began to develop those ideas, um, the Lord said, put them in paper, put them in print. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we've done. And we, again, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we can get it published, and I'm not quite finished with it yet. But I came up with now I can kind of abbreviate to you for you just some of the points that we came up with. Is that all right? Absolutely. All right. All right. In fact, if I can, let me see, because I want to hear, I want you to hear this introduction that I had with you in it. All right. If I can, I'm gonna just, I'll just. See if I can read it to you. Uh oh. Okay, I may not be able to do it now. But hold on, let me try one more time. Okay. No, it's not going to let me do it. Okay. It's, uh, well, we have to have you come back and share that. And by the way, you can. I'll help you with the publishing. You know, I started a publishing company when okay. I wrote my book. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, here's the paragraph with you in it, though. The vision to write this book came on Valentine's Day 2022 
as we prepare to serve as a guest, as guest on uh, on an internet show hosted by our dear friend Dr. J. Lauren Russell on his show known as Matters of Faith. As we pull thoughts, our thoughts together, we could we could feel the presence of the Spirit prodding us with insights we knew were fresh and in, innovative. We knew that we had been given something that spoke to us, but something we were confident would speak to anyone who was serious about uh, uh, strengthening their relationship. So here's the point. Faith, these are the ingredients. Faith, forgiveness, fulfillment, Finances, friendship, fun, fellowship, food. <laughs> <laughs> like I told you this morning. But yeah, and it, it, it's coming together. What I really wanted to do, I want to conclude with the many lessons that we have learned about food and how food really has brought us together. And I thank God for Loretta's uh, ability to cook. That girl can mm. cook. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I, I, we, yeah, we'll have another time when she- Yeah, we'll bring you back. I promise you, we'll bring you back and we'll talk All about right. that publishing and stuff like that. But let, right. let, me, let me sort of share, and I, I thank you so much for that too. But you know, uh, this is in light of what we've been talking about, about being squeezed. You know, okay. what amazes me all too often, disappoints me at the same time, is the negative and destructive words we allow to come out of our mouths. Okay. The negative and destructive things we say about ourselves, about our children, about our women, about our men, our families, our communities, our cities, and states, about our nation, about our elected officials, about the world, and even about God. We do that when we are sober-minded and at peace. At least we think we're sober and at peace. Mm -hmm. But what happens when real pressure comes upon us? What do we do when we're squeezed? I read an interesting story recently, and I want to share it with you. All right. A monk decided to meditate alone, away from the monastery. He took a boat out in the middle of a nearby lake, closed his eyes, and began to meditate. He floated for many hours in undisturbed silence, peaceful and serene. Suddenly, he felt another boat run into him with a loud thud. He tried to ignore it, but the boat hit him again. His anger rose. Who was interrupting his meditation? He opened his eyes, ready to shout at whoever was disturbing him. Uh -huh. Then he saw that the boat hitting him was empty, drifting all by itself. Within minutes, it floated away leaving him in peace again. What do you do when you're squeezed? You remember the song, The Tears of a Clown by Smokey Robinson? Oh yeah. If there's a smile on my face, it's only there trying to fool the public. But when it comes down to trying to fooling you, now honey, that's quite a different subject. Don't let my glad expression give you the wrong impression. Really, I'm sad. Really sadder than sad. You're gone and I'm hurting so bad. Like a clown, I appear to be glad. Now, there's some sad things known to man, mm. but ain't too much sadder than the tears of a clown when there's no one around. Well, that's smoky with something else, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes we are so torn up on the outside, but we wear a mask. That's right. To, to mask everything that's going on on the inside. We camouflage our hearts pretty well. We've had years of experience. We can put on a good front, hide the true contents of our heart, but when we are squeezed, what's in us comes out. In our often chaotic, turbulent, and troubled world, let me suggest that we do a self-check to see what comes out when we're squeezed. I like that. Remember that story just a moment ago I told you about that empty boat right. and the monk? Uh -huh. Well, there was a little more to that story. It actually concludes this way. At the moment, the monk realized that
that the boat was empty. Okay. He realized something else. He understood that his anger was something within him, not outside. It needed something external to bring it out. Okay. And after that day, whenever the monk met someone who annoyed him or provoked him or his anger, he thought to himself, this other person is just an empty boat. The anger is inside me. Okay, I like that. Being seized or being squeezed is a human experience. It is going to happen to everybody time and time again. I'm not concerned about the squeeze. I am concerned about what comes out when you are squeezed. The monk was a monk. The boat that bumped into him didn't make him into a monk. They didn't make him not be a monk. He did that all by himself. Find out who God created you to be and be that man. Be that woman. When the squeeze comes, what will come out of you is what the Lord put in you. Jesus said, I will make you to become. Be that person. The one that Jesus made you to become Amen. when the squeeze comes. Did you enjoy my guest tonight? Did he provoke you to look at the squeeze from many different angles? I certainly hope so. He has been and continues to be a profound expositor and interpreter of the Holy Writ and an inerrant. He, and he's, he, he is an irritant to the complacent Christian. He irritates them because he challenges them to move forward and to do better. He has been my friend and brother for many years before he became pastor of the Great Universal Baptist Church and my pastor. But he has been a friend of Jesus much longer than that. The last time he was on the broadcast, it was last year on Valentine's Day, as he told you, both he and his lovely wife, Dr. Loretta Dupree. But tonight, we had them all to ourselves. Hey, Loretta, <laughs> Reverend Dr. Dupree, or Doc, as I affectionately call you, let me tell you how grateful I am that you carved out time in your schedule to be with us tonight. Some of great universal is here, and we all enjoy being with you again tonight. Uh -huh. Thank you for being a friend, brother, to the Matters of Faith family, for helping us to clarify our understanding of and nurture our response to the squeezes in life that we have to experience. We're truly blessed to have you as a part of this family of faith, and I thank you again for sharing yourself with us tonight. Thank so you. let me ask you this. Oh, yeah. You got to prepare to come back. And bless us again. And you got to tell us more about the book. Maybe by that time it'll be published. All right. With your help. <laughs> All right. We'll make it happen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Matter of fact, that's a little nudge to me because I've got to publish at least two more books. Amen. Within, you know, I, I wanted to do it I, by June. It ain't like going to happen by June, but it's going to happen before the end of the year. We'll like, get two you more out me, like you said to me, you squeezed me to do the book. There now, you go. I'm gonna squeeze you to do squeeze your Squeeze me. <laughs> squeeze me. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now listen, don't forget our advertisers and our sponsors. The JLR company, J Law and R Consulting LLC. That's my company for all your church financial needs. Call 718-328-8096. 718-328-8096. And you can visit our website. We do have a website, www.jlawandrussellconsulting.com www.jlorenrussellconsulting.com. It's not about the castle. It's about the kingdom. And don't forget Matters of Faith, the book. Now, I've been talking about it tonight, but here it is. This is the book that I've published. This is my book. And you need to get this book. If you don't have it, make sure that you get it. You can use Cash App, Dollar Sign Matters of Faith, Dollar Sign Matters of Faith, same thing that's behind me. If you do that, the book is $23.40 and that covers shipping and handling. Or you can get it's it as an my, ebook. It's on my bookshelf. There you go. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. Get the ebook. If you get the ebook, there's no shipping and no handling, and you get it immediately. www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. It is in your chat box. Better Mag Magazine. I talked about that earlier, but Better Mag is a Black-owned publication, www.abettermag.com. Get your subscription to A Better Mag magazine. 
a two-year subscription is $27.50 for a two-year subscription. By the way, they also are now carrying my column. So my column is published in five publications now, the Bronx Chronicle, the Yonkers Insider, Better Mag Magazine, Black Westchester Magazine, and Pamela's Big Heart Newsletter. Wonderful. Five places, five places. So make sure that you subscribe to www.abettermag.com. I should have put it in the chat box. I'll make sure I do it next week. Now, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Telephone, text, email, message, any way you do it, but tell a friend to join us regularly on Monday nights for Matters of Faith, the radio show. We are always live on Matters of Faith and J. Lauren Russell's Facebook group. When the show is over, as we will do tonight, we will drop this episode on our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. That's why I ask you every week that you subscribe, like, and share the Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Now, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, if no one has told you this today, let me be the first to say, I love you and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. So get used to it. We love you too. Reverend much. Dr. Daniel Dupree, thank you again. You know, I love you much. You're my man, my brother. God bless you and good night. Good night, my brother.